tres cuartos. 250 pounds, three quarters. 29 peleas ganadas, una perdida, 22 knockouts. 21 wins, one loss, 22 KOs. Originally from Nigeria. Originario de Nigeria. Residing in Las Vegas, Nevada. The WBC Interim World Champion. Samuel the Nigeria Nightmare Peter. Y en la esquina azul, and in the blue corner. 243 libras, 240 pounds. 34 wins, 5 losses, 26 knockouts. Residing in West Sacramento, California. Fighting for Russia. The WBC champion. The champion of the world. Oleg Maska. Hey. Las instrucciones, no voy a dar instrucciones. Por favor, lectura de las instrucciones. Por instrucciones. Okay, lady man. I already give you the instruction in the dressing room. Good luck. I want a clean fight. Remember, this is the line where the low blows are legal. Okay? Check the gloves and go to your corner. Good luck. If you watched the lightweight title fight between Diaz and Campbell, you saw why you love the lightweights. Both these guys are big punchers. And if one of them lands, you're going to see why you like the heavyweights. Well, already in the first heavyweight matchup of the evening, North Carolina has beaten Duke and Durham. Now on to the next heavyweight fight. <laughs> and I've seen that referee before, Emmanuel Stewart. He's the guy who stopped the fight between Oliver McCall and Lennox Lewis in London in 1993. <laughs> A stoppage with which Lennox doesn't really argue now, incidentally which means that 15 years have gone by. They walk to each other, and it begins. Two very big men who can punch. Peter Range finding with the jab. Moskayev staying at range. Listening to the instructions coming from the corner of Samuel Peter, which is basically from Stacy McKinney and Pops, as we call them, Sam Anderson. They are very concerned about Moscow's right hand. That's why they tell him Sam to keep his left hand up. Well, if you saw Moscow knock Hasim Rahman through the ropes with a right hand in Atlantic City in 1999, as many of our viewers did, you understand why you worry about it, but. He was tremendously effective against Hasim Rahman with a little left hook. One thing I've noticed about Moskayev, if he finds a weakness in your arsenal early on, if he finds a hole where he can work in your defense, he will go to it again and again and again. See the pace here, so much different from the lightweight fight we just saw. But the drama, the tension is higher because the fight can end at any moment the way these guys punch. Neither man has really tried a power shot yet. Sam Peter reaches out with the right hand to go to the body. Reaches with the left hand to go to the body. Moskayev still just focusing upstairs. Every time Sam starts making an aggressive motion, Moskayev starts backing away, trying to keep space, trying to keep distance where he can place his shots and get in and out. We know that Moskayev has been told to be cautious about Peter's power in the first three or four rounds and then to begin stepping up the intensity moment by moment. Hey. 
Peter has produced some picture book knockouts, like his left hook beheading of Jeremy Williams. As has Muskayev, like his knocking Rachman through the ropes. Yep. Hard right hand by Peter, and he follows it with another right hand. Peter, look, Sam looks very relaxed. He seems and has a, I'm very impressed with the right hand because most of his shot used to be club and punches, but he's shooting more straight up punches now, but can never relax too much with Moscow. He's a cagey old guy, and he's always looking for that one shot. Peter also produces a little left hook off the jab, and now Moskayev swings his first two power shots, and there's that punch to the back of the head, which Moskayev's people have spent weeks complaining about and suggesting that Peter must be watched. And the end of round one. A good round, Samuel. But the thing is, you got to just double jab and take a step in, take a step in. But he's throwing right hands at you, so make sure you keep ducking under. Keep ducking under, rolling under, rolling under. Then all you get your rhythm going, then you're going to come with combinations. Come on, get your legs out. Listen, when he throws a jab, you make a miss, throw two and three jabs. You got to beat him to that jab. Watch when he hyperextends. You got you to count him right away with the jab. Or aim, aim all your punches towards the heart, all right? And, and, and let go. This guy, don't give him that respect, bro. Don't give him that respect. Copy box numbers in a relatively sparse round one. Moscow have five out of 32, Peter 14 out of 51. Those two right hands over the top surely won the round, in my view, for Sam Peter. And now they go to the second. You know, the right hands that Moscow threw, I was not that impressed with. He seemed like he was kind of clubbing them, throwing them. He had to wide arch in his right hand tonight, and, you know, and it looked a little bit slow. Moscow looks far yeah, more looks apprehensive against Peter than was the case against Rachman back in August of 06. Of course, Moscow's only had one fight in those 16 months, and that's one possible deficit for him is ring rust in the fight. To make up for it, his manager, Dennis Rappaport, says that he sparred 170 rounds in training. That's a lot. That's a lot of sparring. But you know, when this fight was first made mention originally, everybody, particularly Latimer and I, we thought it was going to be a mismatch. Sam Peter's going to destroy Moscow. And it's it, now that the fight, fight took place, more people are giving Moscow a better chance simply because of Sam not looking too impressive in the, the, the three fights fight. that he had. Yeah, the two fights with uh, James Tony and the fight with Jimmy McClain. So without doing anything, Moscow's odds seem to improve with the public a lot more. And now Moscow is getting much more active in round two after having laid back through most of round one. Moscow is 39 years old. And uh, Peter fought a total of 36 rounds against Vladimir Klitschko and James Tony. That's like getting a PhD in heavyweight boxing. It was not evident in Peter's performance against McLean. But here, Emmanuel, I think you're seeing some improvements. Yes? That's what I said. I think he's now, even though he didn't look at him impressive in those fights, I think beginning with Latimer, he really changed and became a Class A fighter. And you can see the improvement now. On the other hand, Moskayev has found a couple of answers in round two. A little while ago, you saw him counter over a right hand with a quick left hook that landed flush. That left hook was tremendously important against Rachman in setting him up for the 12th round knockout. He, even in some of Muskaya's best wins of his career, he hasn't started fast. Um, he is technical. He studies his opponent. And as you mentioned earlier, Jim, he exploits weaknesses as the fight progresses. Right. Muskaya originally lived in Staten Island. Recently, he's been making a family move to Sacramento, California. He was very enthusiastic about moving to Sacramento back in 2006 because he was going to set up a real estate investment business. It wasn't exactly the perfect moment in time for setting up a real estate investment business, so he slowed down on that plan for the moment. Peter backs Moskayev up with a big left hand, tries to go to the body with his right. Peters is getting closer and closer as the fight goes on this round here. He's getting a little better range now than he had before. Moscow is chopping over the top with a right hand. But it's a slow, slow chopping right hand. There's no speed to it. 
Okay, we're gonna have to come off your flat feet. That's what's going to be. The Tennessee Volunteers, a long bit of basketball powerhouse in the women's game, now behind colorful coach Bruce Pearl. The men's program was briefly atop the rankings. Find out what's behind Pearl's success on the next Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, premiering Monday night, March 10. And March 22, Boxing After Dark returns with lightweight titleist Joel Casamayor taking on Michael Katsidis. Get those jabs going. Two and three jabs, don't wait. Don't wait, Oleg. Don't wait. Give him some water. Take a deep breath. You got about 30 seconds. There you go. All right, let's get the chair. Columbia Box numbers in the second round totally evened up. Moscow have 15 out of 48, including 10 out of 34 jabs. Peter 14 out of 48, including 7 out of 31 jabs. And we go to round three. Stop, stop, stop. No punch, no punch. Clean fight. Little jab lands for Peter. Maskev misses with the left hook, and once again, Peter hits Maskev on the back of the head with the right hand. But what, what's uh, interesting, when Peter avoids the punches of, of Moscow, he seems to do it so relaxed, which is uh, interesting because he's never been known for that, but his defensive skills have improved a lot. His upper body movement and everything, and, and he's totally relaxed in there. And his jab works better than Moscow when he throws it. I got to say, guys, since late in the last round, I think Mos Moscow has made some adjustments, and I see him um, fighting much better over the, the last maybe minute of the last round and so far this round. Well, Harold Letterman gave him the second round. Twice in this round now, he's been hit on the back of the head. What about this Sam Peter thing of hitting people in the back of the head, Vladimir? It was important in producing the three, or uh, Emmanuel, it was important in producing the three knockdowns of Vladimir Klitschko in Atlantic City. Well, that was really a part of his style at the beginning, but I don't think that's the case anymore. He catches Moskayev and wobbles him with the right hand there. Moskayev's badly hurt. And now Peter is just unloading in the corner. Moskayev not firing back, but blocking most of the shots. He blocked almost all those punches with his gloves. Yeah, now let's see if he has any legs. Sam need to just take his time. He'll catch him again with the same punch, but he's, don't burn yourself out. Peter's jab is impressive here. Now Moscow has got his legs back, and he rocks Peter with the left hook. And now it's Peter who's on the defensive. This is turning out to be almost like a real heavyweight brawl. Not too many Chris Sharp movements are punches. Peter had Moscow have hurt a minute into the round. And a minute, 15 seconds later, Moscow have hurt Peter with a left hook. You know, that's because when they exchange, Emmanuel, even though Peter's younger and at this point has more athleticism than right Moscow, Moscow's punches are shorter. It's much more experience, too. You know, the experience from the amateurs I mean he did a lot of things off of instinct. What a where, comeback where in this Peter, round where, where, where by Peter Oleg Moscow. Peter's inexperienced, so when he gets tired, he's tired. When a guy with experience a mouth, he could be tired, but that other experienced person keeps fighting for him. And that's what looks like is happening in this fight now. Both men walk very slowly to their corners after a tumultuous round three. Don't get three. careless. Don't get careless. Shut those legs up. When you join punches, you gotta go in a circle. You can't stay in front of there. This guy can't take a punch ball. You gotta go to the body. Come on. We're gonna win. Bang and turn the trade this round, all right? There you go. We need to box through this round, all right? Let's give you one round to recover and everything, okay? Do what we tell and, you to do. Okay? And listen, counter the right hand. Counter the right hand. Because he's throwing him at him. Here we see Sam Peter land the right hand. It wasn't so much of a, a, a clean shot, but it caught right on the side of the head where most of his power punches come from. And Moscow at this time is getting away. Didn't get hit with anything clean after that. And here we see coming back, Moscow come back with his exchange, and he lands a grazing left hook, I think, that caught Peter. But none of them were really clean direct punches on the chin. 
But oftentimes in this division, you'll see guys badly hurt on punches to the temple or the top of the head or behind the ear. Nine of Moscow have 16 connects in that round. We're in the last minute. Relatively even copy box numbers. Harold, how do you have it through three? Buckingham, two runs to one, 29, 28, Samuel Peter. I, I gave him runs one and three. Jim, I, I thought you had to give him the third round based on that huge flurry in the middle of the round. But, you know, Oleg Biskayev certainly came back at the end of the round. Jim, I got to tell you one thing. You mentioned Lupe Garcia stopping Lennox Lewis's fight in London. The judge in his fight, Daniel Vanderbilt, stopped Lennox Lewis's fight in Johannesburg. Well, and somewhere Lennox is watching and <laughs> laughing. At this point, he can. He's Lennox good. Lewis is in the rare position of getting better every day. He, he's thinking to himself at this point, oh, or hold that thought. He's thinking to himself at this point, I lost two fights in my career. They're talking about both of them. But, yeah, but he did knock out both guys in return and matches, too. Viciously. Yeah. Well, and just to quote it again. Stop. A distinction that Lennox holds along with only Rocky Marciano. The only two heavyweight champions who have defeated every man with whom they were ever in the ring. Gene Tunney lost to Harry Greb, avenged the loss. Later won the heavyweight championship. Unless I'm missing someone, I guess he's the third. All right, I'll have to accept it. Well done, Max. <laughs> That's the third. Still a very small group. Small fraternity. Stop, A slow-paced puncher's slow delight. Pace, yeah, and I'm looking at uh, Sam is starting to throw his wide right hands again. And going down the stretch, he better watch because Moscow's eyes seem to be more alert. And I'm looking at the experience in, in his eyes. I see a lot of experience in Moscow's eyes starting to show as the fight goes on. In recent years, you'll recall that there's one governing body which has adopted open scoring for title fights. And this is it. So at the end of this round, the judges' scores are going to be announced to the audience. If you listen up, you'll hear how the judges have scored the fight to this point. Listen up. Listen up. Sammy, you're not using the jab enough, okay? You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. If you get the jab working, you're going to have no problem with this guy, okay? Deep breath and let it out slow. You're giving the guy a chance because you're not jabbing enough. You're in dog shape, okay? Stop worrying about time. What you go with hook, you gotta come with the right hand. Hook and right hand. Let's go. You're gonna beat this guy, bro. You're gonna beat him. This guy's soft in the body, bro. You gotta be alive. Don't stay in front of the man. You stay in front, you're looking for, you're, looking, you're gonna be a victim there. Side to side, break rhythm. Let's go. Well, we did not hear the scores, and that may have something to do with the relatively inexperienced local ring announcer, but one way or another, the predicted open scoring fiasco. Oh, now they're going to uh, announce it. Judge A, 37-39, Peter. Judge B, 37-39, Peter. Judge C, 38-40, Peter. So the third judge must have scored two even rounds. Peter lands a good right hand and a stiff left jab. Moskayev comes back with a one, two, three, takes the right hand for his trouble. You know, the way these guys are winging shots, anything can happen here. But as Emmanuel said earlier, Moskayev's muscle memory is more correct and he throws shorter punches in exchanges and that probably tips the scales in his favor in those exchanges. 
but, but Peter has a little bit better coordination upper body movement. Just a little bit more. Harold, uh, even though Sam Peter had a very slow round four, landing only five out of 21 punches, all three judges have Peter ahead by two points. What do you make of that? What you, I tell you the truth, I got it the same way. I had 39-37 Samuel Peter, so I can't really argue with him. The one that, the one's going to bother me, though, is that 40 to 38. I mean, certainly I thought Miskoyev clearly won the second round. They just got two rounds even in this fight. I mean, I think a judge could have picked the winner. As you mentioned, Jim, given the inexperience of the ring announcer, it's possible that the scores have been mistabulated it's also or misled. Yeah. That's quite possible. That's a good point, Max. Under any circumstances, I'll stick with my personal opinion that open scoring is a dreadful idea, which does way more to sap the fight of its competitive suspense than to provide that element of integrity that the audience is supposedly a, going to get. It's a from. terrible idea in practice, if not in theory. Hard right hand by Moskayev, and Peter returns with one of his own. But Oleg keeps firing up the middle, and that may ultimately make a difference. Yeah. Peter is returning counter punches whenever he gets hit. He returns a punch back automatically. But, you know, I'm just looking at Moskov's eyes. He still seems to be studying him and trying to analyze it. He's trying to land one big clean punch, and it very well could happen because Peter's face is so flat footed. And as the fight goes on, I think he's going to get sloppy. And one more thing about those scores. Oleg Moskayev has a lawsuit now against the governing body, which is sanctioning the fight. What this shot. Tremendous shot taken by Peter, and he came right back. That means a lot to in terms of this, this actually destroying the confidence of a guy like Moscow. Those are the shots that Moscow normally knocks people out with. More on the lawsuit in round six. Oleg, when you put your combinations, you can't uh, leave a spacing. I told you about that. All right, come on. They got you losing this fight, so you got to stop. You got to stop moving in our body. You got to start moving. Now you got to start throwing punches and let go to the body. I've been begging you to go. You're smart with the left hand, okay? Now listen, they just said that you were winning by two points. Now he heard it. Don't let this guy out box you, Samuel. Hustle up, hustle up. And get a little rhythm going up in your upper body, man, so you can go. Hey, here you see the right hand that came in by Moscow. Couldn't have been a better punch zone. And Peter took the punch and he actually came right back shortly after that and landed punches of his own. CompuBox numbers in the fifth round. Moskav landed 12 out of 28 jabs. Peter won out of 13. You saw the power shots for Moskav. How could you not give him the round? But, as I mentioned, Moskav and his contingent have a lawsuit now against the governing body which sanctions the fight. So you might reasonably ask, how could he win a decision under these circumstances? And you might reasonably answer, he couldn't. <laughs> Not to mention that we are in the country which is the headquarters of that governing body. And Peter's promoter is known to have an extremely friendly relationship with it. It would be nice if it went the distance and Muskayev deserved to win that he did get the decision. Uh, it would be even nicer if we had a conclusive concussive ending here. The way they're winning shots, it looks like a conclusive ending is likely. Yeah. Hard to imagine them going the distance, firing power shots like this, except, of course, that the pace remains so slow. Good body shot by Peter. And Nostev once again makes clear to the, the referee that Peter's hitting him on the back of the head. And now referee Luffy Garcia warns Peter, but does not take a point. And I don't know about you, Emmanuel, I think it is still very big in his arsenal to hit people in the back of the yeah, head. I don't really, you can't say that was a rabbit right, punch. Right. It was just the way that Moscow was bending his head down to it. It was, a part of it, was, a, it was not enough where the referee could really take a point away. So even though Peter is not tall, he has long arms. And I think sometimes the way he wins these punches with his long arms, they wind up in the back of the head, whether or not it's intentional. Yes, if he launches one of those looping overhand rights too late, while the fighter has already moved forward, that's where the that, glove is going to go. That was the same thing. That, but they're overhand rights a lot. But, you know, it's different when you get in a clinch and you, you, then you re purposely reach in the guy in the back of the head. But the punches that just come from around and a little bit much, you can't 
can't control that. Crowd thought that Peter had been hurt by the left hook. In fact, he was just off balance. Right. It seems as, 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 as the fatigue sets in, the, the fight's going to favor Moscow, as I said, because his experience will make him able to think better under in an exhausted situation as compared to Peter. Hard right hand by as Peter. He, and he's hurt. Knocks Moskaya back. Moskaya goes right back into the ringer, and now he is momentarily out on his feet. And Sam takes his time and places his punches. Peter lands on the back of the head twice more. Moskayev tries to show the referee. Hard shot to the face. He's fighting a very smart this time. He's not just throwing a lot of punches. He's placing every one of his punches. Amazing that it's Moskayev over. is it's still over. up. It's over. It's over. And and that's, Garcia stops it. That's the kind of knockout we were looking for. There is a guy with a mandate to fight Vladimir Klitschko now. I agree. That was the result that the division needed to settle the question of where to go next. That's a real heavyweight knockout. I mean, and he placed, I like the fact that when he had him hurt, he didn't get excited this time. He placed every punch. Yeah, that was a clinical every finish. every punch, yes. Very, very good professional finish. Almost Kelly Pavlik-like. Peter closed the show, landing 25 out of 35 power shots. An excellent sixth round TKO for Samuel Peter against a smart, experienced, good technical fighter in and, Oleg Moskow. You know what? He is the first Nigerian heavyweight champion. We've got a lot of good heavyweight contenders and challenges, but he's the first He's the first one. Nigerian heavyweight titleist. Yeah, champion. Titleist? Titleist is what I would say. You can <laughs> say champion if you want to. Yeah, oh, yeah, heavyweight. Okay, heavyweight this heavyweight. is a yeah. distinction but, that, you know, but to me, the champion is when when we have one guy who we who we are sure is the dominant fighter but, in the division. Believe me, down in Nigeria, they're going to take it the other way. I, <laughs> he's the heavyweight champion. First champions. Nigerian <laughs> fighter with a heavyweight belt, and yeah. I think it's, it's great for the continent of Africa. Yeah. Here's the punch that first hurt Moskaya. Oh, my, and that was definitely nothing clubbing about that on the back of the head. That was a good, clean blow right there. But what was more impressive was the way he followed up after that. And now here's the end of the fight. And this is where Peter finishes with a series of strong blows yeah, it's on the face. None of those punches landed on the back of the head. Nope. Most of them landed on the face or the chin. And the stoppage was well deserved, though it came with seconds remaining in the round. Yeah, yeah but still, he was just clean, accurate blows, and nothing hardly missed. Every punch was effective. So we don't have to worry about the judges. Don't have to worry about influence. Samuel Peter made it unequivocal. And now the Nigerian nightmare steps forward to stake his claim as the man you must fight to prove yourself as the leader of the division. And you know what was impressive, too, was the fact that he showed that he could take a good punch when he got hit solid on the chin. Never did he waver. And they showed great coordination when he was slipping and sliding. A lot of things that he didn't do when he first fought with Latimer, he would just walk straight in. Now, just in case you don't remember, the fight was two and a half years ago in Atlantic City. Samuel Peter fought Vladimir Klitschko and knocked him down three times. But Klitschko won every other round in the fight and cruised to a 114-111, 114-111, 114-111, unanimous decision over Peter. Peter wants a chance to avenge that loss. He, he's a much improved fighter. He didn't have upper body movement, placement of his punches, anything like he did tonight. He's much, much more improved. And whether his next fight is with Vitaly Klitschko, Vladimir, whoever, he is a serious threat with that kind of punching power. About 10 years ago, there was a Nigerian fighter named Ike Ibeabuchi who was seen by many as the uncrowned king of the division. He wound up going to jail. Sam Peter ultimately took his place and got the job done. Now let's go to Victor Paris with the official particulars on the decision. After two minutes, 56 seconds. Después de dos minutos, 56 segundos. Referee Lupe Garcia stopped the fight for a technical knockout. As the winner, como ganador por knockout técnico, Samuel de Nigeria Nightmare Peter.
Pound the box numbers in the fight. Peter with uh, a 12 punch edge and landed punches. He threw 12 more as well. Power shots made the difference in the fight. Sam Peter landed 21 more, threw 28 more, landed at a higher percentage. Put together the package in round six that closed the fight. And now let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with the winner. Congratulations, Sam, on a spectacular stoppage win. What message did you just send? I'm the student heavyweight champion of the world. Who next? Well, let's talk about who's next. The only clamor to see Vitaly Klitschko in you is in a sanctioning body. Tomorrow. I'm, I'm ready tomorrow. The rest of the world wants to see you and Vladimir sorted out I'm to see who tomorrow. the heavyweight champion of the world is. I'm the best heavyweight champion of the world. I am have WPC with me. I'm undefeated champion. Undisputed champion. I want who next. Okay, Vladimir beat you the first time, though you did knock him down three times. What do you have to say about a rematch with Vladimir Klitschko? We knock him out. We knock him out. We well, 21st place. We want Vladimir. I want to thank the state governor of Aquai said, the excellency, Goswin Akpabio. He's the one that sponsored me for the camp. The best governor ever I've seen. Love boxing. He loved boxing and he brought me very well. I have this opportunity to Sam say hi to my president. Sa Sa Sam, what did you learn in your fights with Vladimir and with James Tony? I'm saying the truth. James Tony is the best boxer. I beat James Tony twice. I can beat any boxer in the world. I see give credit to James Tony. He's the best. Again, I want to ask. I understand there's a uh, sanctioning body silliness in terms of fighting Vitaly Klitschko. Vladimir is the recognized number one guy. You two, if you fought, the winner would be recognized for the first time since Lennox Lewis was champion as the heavyweight champion of the world. Will you fight Vladimir Klitschko next if you can? All of them, they're going down. They're going down. We don't care how they come. Congratulations, Sam. Thank you. Glory be to Almighty God. Thank you. Jim.